All right, so let's talk tonight about everyone's least favorite topic to learn about and favorite topic to hate on, heart blocks. These seem really scary, but hopefully I can break them down and make them where they can better understand them. Yeah, there we go. So let's talk about problem when there's an atrium ventricular problem because you know in my previous PowerPoints I talked about top of the heart problems and bottom of the heart problems. But when we're talking about blocks effectively what I'm talking about is there's a problem with the top of the heart communicating with the bottom of the heart. And so I'm going to use two different analogies, um, you know, um, but you know, you, one of the things to keep in mind is, is that, you know, the top of the heart needs to communicate with the bottom of the heart so that they're in sync with each other. It's a very symbiotic relationship. Um, and, it, you know, it, if there's something wrong with the pathway from the top of the heart communicating to the bottom of the heart, what happens is a block. There's literally a block, like, you know, kind of think of like a brick wall between the top of the heart and the bottom of the heart where they're not communicating the way that they need to. Um, and obviously this can lead to a lot of problems because at the end of the day, everything, you know, every sort of dysrhythmia, the problem comes down to lack of cardiac output or decreased cardiac output. And that's really what's the problem at the end of the day. All right. So let's start talking about these types of blocks. So there's a first degree, second degree, and third degree. And second degree has two types. Um, so at the end of the day, you have four types of blocks that you need to kind of get a handle on. So let's start with the easiest one to get a handle on. This is what's called a first degree block. Everything in a first degree block is normal except they have a prolonged PR interval. And if you go back and watch my, you know, basics of EKG video, um, you know, what I talk about there is that this P wave, it's supposed to be close to the QRS. In other words, the top of my heart, it should not take very long for the top of my heart to communicate and tell the bottom of the heart to contract. Um, but what happens in a first degree block, think of it kind of like this. Um, you know, that, you know, there's all the construction on 35 all the time and that you're going to get home, but it might take you a little bit longer because you might have to take a detour. And that's what a first degree block is. I'm also going to use this other analogy about it being, um, you know, a, uh, you know, romantic relationship um, because a lot of people, you know, find that humorous and find it a good way to memorize it. Um, these different types of blocks. So another way of looking at it is that there's a partner that starts coming home late. Um, and they come home late every single night. You can already predict them. Maybe they become a workaholic, they're working too much, um, but they always get home at the same time every day. So, you know, this is a very regular rhythm. The only problem is, is that there's just this long interval and you can see this, look at this P wave here. It is multiple boxes away from the QRS. And that interval is supposed to be less than one of these boxes. So here, let me actually draw on this real quick. Let me get this over real quick where, you can kind of see what I'm talking about and we can zoom in. So, oh, there we go. So, um, you know, let me make this skinnier. Let's see there, that'll be good. So um, this P wave is supposed to be less, it's not, this PR interval, I should say, is supposed to be less than one of these boxes. And look at how far away it is. So I'm measuring the distance from here to here. And um, this is this distance here is not supposed to be greater than one of these boxes like this. So you can see how much bigger um, that PR interval is. So all I'm looking at for a first degree block is that it is less than one one large box. So there's also um, a second degree uh, block and there's two types. Um, so we're gonna go into each of those. So um, things are starting to get more serious in this type of block. And I should mention when you're thinking of these blocks, they're always progressive. So like most people, I mean, um, they, there's people that just, you know, they have a problem and they go into a third degree block. But a lot of times for most people that have blocks, it starts as a first degree and it progresses and gets worse and worse, but anyway, Things are starting to get more serious because the big problem with blocks is like I mentioned, the top of the heart's not communicating with the bottom of the heart. So what you're gonna start seeing in these rhythms is, is that the top of the heart is sending a signal to tell the bottom of the heart, hey, it's time to squeeze, and it doesn't do it. So there's dropped beats. And when there's dropped beats, remember, what is the QRS? That's the bottom of the heart squeezing and sending blood out to the rest of the body. So if the top of my heart is saying, let's squeeze, and then 
the bottom of the heart's not squeezing blood out to the rest of the body, that means there's going to be lack of perfusion. There's dropped beats. There's no QRS after the P, and that can lead to a lot of problems with blood pressure, hypotension, decreased perfusion. So um, when we're getting into this, um, this particular type of block, second degree block type one, um, it, um, the thing that's a little bit different about it is that it, um, like I mentioned, starts to have drop beats, but it has a very rhythmic fashion to it. So let me, um, you know, minimize this again. We can kind of go in. So looking at this rhythm, we're looking at the PR interval, by the way, all the blocks, we're gonna be looking and staring at this PR interval. So this distance between this, well, let's see if I can get to go, this and this. So that's actually good. That's less than one large box, that's normal. But look here, now we're getting larger than one box and look, nope, oh, this one's even longer. And then look here, there's supposed to be a QRS here. So the, the pattern to a second degree type one is there's a long, uh, a lengthening PR interval. So it's normal, longer, longer drop. And so um, what we, um, we call this, you know, the kind of the like fun little rhyme that we do to remember this is longer, longer drop. Now we have a winky buck. And of course, whoever, you know, named this rhythm had some weird, crazy name. So what we're looking at here is there's a, um, this PR interval is getting longer, longer, and then all of a sudden, it's gone. So the way that I remember this kind of going back to our relationship analogy um, is that the, there's that partner who's maybe working too much. Now they're coming home later and later. And so it used to be predictable. They used to be coming home at the same time, even though they were coming home late every night, they were coming home, um, you know, every night I could predict that they were going to come home. What happens now is the partner's coming home later and later. So maybe they're working like at first they're working till 10 then they're working till 12, then they're working till two. And then some nights they're just not coming home. And that's what this rhythm is. It's longer, longer drop. And now you have a winky buck. Um, so my biggest concern, of course, is that when I'm dropping those beats, I'm getting no squeeze, no contraction, no blood flow out to the rest of my body. So I need to monitor my blood pressure, heart rate, and oxygen levels closely. So next is a second degree type two. So this is different in the fact of, again, we're gonna look at that PR interval. Let's get our little marker out here. So look at this one. This one actually has a normal PR interval. Like, you know, it's, it's not even the size of one box. And look, normal, and then, wait, what's going on here? There's a P wave, but no QRS. So here's a random dropped beat here. So then a normal PR interval, normal, and then oh, another dropped beat here. So what happens in second degree type two is we have um, a normal PR interval, but just randomly dropping beats out of nowhere. So this is more serious. I know this might not seem more serious because you're thinking, oh, is it more serious when that PR is getting longer? But this is more serious because in the Winky Bach, it's much more predictable. It's longer, longer drop. I know when that beat's gonna drop. So the same thing like with the relationship scenario. If my partner was coming home um, later and later, um, at least I would know, hey, he's been coming home later and later, and I bet tomorrow he's not going to come home. So I can start to predict it. But with the Mobitz um, type 2 or second degree type 2, what happens with this one is randomly they're just not coming home. So think of it this way. You know, the couple's getting counseling. They're trying to work on things. The partner starts coming home most nights. But then sometimes they have fights and get upset, and they just don't come home, and there's no warning. Or sometimes they just they are like, I can't deal with this anymore, and they just don't show up. And so um, this is, like, much more unpredictable, and we never know – um, when they're going to do, can you see there's no pattern here. Now, the, you know, there, I'm sure there's some types of second degree type two that have some sort of a little bit of a pattern, et cetera. But as a whole, this is much more unpredictable because there's no warning. There's no longer, longer drop. It's just um, regular, regular drop, regular drop, regular, regular drop. You know, I mean, it's just like there, there's, there's no, um, you know, sense to it. There's no rhythm to it. It's just random. I don't know when I'm going to get a QRS or when I'm not. And so again, dropped beats, no squeeze, it's no cardiac output, and I'm really going to be wanting to watch their hemodynamics and vital signs closely. So the last one is a third degree block. So this is complete heart block. Um, and so what happens in this one is this is a complete lack of communication. So the top of the heart has been trying to send signals. The bottom of the heart's not listening. It can't get the signals the top of the heart's sending. So kind of think of that couple situation. This is where they're just living completely separate. The one partner's doing whatever they want to do. The other partner's doing their own thing. There's no communication, no hope for reconciliation. 
Um, and you know, the one of the partners is actually walking all over the other one and like getting it, um, stepping on the other one's toes. So pretty much they don't even care what the other one is doing. It's just going to do its own thing. So what you'll notice about this one is, um, if you go back and, um, let me go back real quick before I start drawing. If I go back, um, something to note here that I bring up is that like, look at your R to R here in a first degree block. It's normal. Once you start dropping beats, look how irregular this is. It's like regular, regular, long, regular, regular, long. Like, you know, like there's, um, it's irregular, um, you know, uh, beats. So instead of being like, you know, it's gonna be. You know, it's gonna be, have like an irregularity. And then with the second degree type two, it's even more irregular. It's like, uh, You know, it's like it's completely all over the place. So like it, it, there's a lot of irregularity with the second degree. With the first degree and with the third degree, look at this. And let me get my little uh, pen out here. There's a regular distance. And I'm sorry, my arrows suck. Uh, there's a regular distance between this, um, all these QRSs. Because keep in mind now, the, the bottom of the heart and the top of the heart, um, there's no dropped beats because they're each doing their own thing. Um, uh, it's a very slow rate because, um, remember, keep in mind if the, the bottom of the heart relies on the top of the heart to have a fast beat, because remember the top of the heart has that SA node that says you need to beat 60 to hundred times a minute. But when the ventricles are doing their own thing, if they're not waiting for the top of the heart to give them signals, they're going to beat at a rate of 20 to 40 beats per minute. That's really slow. Um, so this rhythm is going to be a lot slower than the other ones usually. Uh, and then look at all these P waves. There's these P waves everywhere. Here's a P wave, you know, here's one here, here's one here, et cetera. You can see all of these. And you know, the thing about these P waves is they're all the same distance from each other too. So if I measured on a piece of paper, the distance between these, there's the same distance between the P waves because pretty much the P waves, they're doing their own thing. Um, and the QRSs are doing their own thing. So there's the same distance between all of these, um, uh, like the P waves um, march out and the QRSs march out. So they're each doing their own thing. Um, and so um, pretty much this is where uh, like, you know, the, the heart is in complete block. In other words, it's gonna be very slow. So there's gonna be less cardiac output. Um, and um, yeah, it is definitely not very helpful for that patient because there's going to usually be signs of very poor perfusion. So how to break these down. If you, uh, if you suspect a block, start by looking at that R to R interval like I mentioned to, um, to you. If it's regular, if there's the same distance between your pointy things or your QRSs, it has to be a first or a third degree block. Um, if it's irregular, then it's a second degree block. And I promise we're going to do some practice here on the next slide. Um, and then if it's regular, you can figure out what kind of block it is because um, if there's P waves hidden in the T waves or P waves all over the place, that's a third degree block. But if there's P waves in front of every QRS, but it's just a long interval, that's a first degree. Then you can differentiate the two types of second degrees by looking at that PR interval. Is it changing? If I'm getting longer, longer and dropping beats, then I have a second degree type one or if I have the same or a normal PR interval, but I'm randomly dropping beats, that's a second degree type two. So let's get some practice with this and it'll make a lot more sense. So let's go up to this one first. So let's look first. So the first question I need to ask myself is, is it regular? Is there the same distance between each of these beats here? And the answer is yes, there's the same distance here as it is here, as it is here and here, like there's the same distance in here. So it's regular. So this has to be either a first degree or a third degree. So now I'm going to be looking to see what's the, what are the P waves doing? Is there a whole bunch of P waves everywhere? No, it seems like there's a P wave and there's one for every QRS. The only thing that's off in this rhythm is that it, that PR interval is long. So this is a first degree. All righty, let's just do this first degree. Boop. All right. All right, let's look at this next one. So first thing I'm gonna note is, is it a regular? Is there different distance here? So I have a long distance here. Looks like I got a shorter one here. So it looks like there's some irregularity. So if there's an irregularity, then I know that this has to be a sec, some sort of second degree. So it's a second degree type something, let's say. Um, second degree type, 
type. Um, and so let's look at it now. So now the thing I need to do is I need to look at this PR interval. So let's see, let's look. So this one looks normal. All right, this one up, oh, this one's getting longer. All right, up, oh, up, oh, this one's getting even longer. And look, now there's a dropped beat. So if I'm longer, longer drop, I have a winky bock, or that's a type one. All right, so now let's look at this one. So this one, um, it seems to have a normal R to R, like there's the same distance between these. It's, I notice it's kind of slow. All right, and now I'm gonna look at my P waves. So this is either a first or a third degree block. So now I need to look at my P waves. Are there a bunch of P waves everywhere? Oh my goodness, yes, there are. Look, there's P wave here, there's one here. Look, there's one over here in this T wave. Look, P wave there. There's one kind of poking up here in the T wave again. It looks like there's even a P wave down in here. Look at that, there's something weird going on down there. So this is what we talk about where the P wave just goes wherever it's supposed to go. Like pretty much what's happening is even um, because the top of the heart and the bottom of the heart aren't talking, the top of the heart's just gonna send beats whenever it needs to. It's gonna keep at that rate of 60 to 100 where the bottom of the heart's like, I'm doing my rate of 20 to 40 and they don't care what each other's doing. They're gonna trample all over each other because they're each just doing their own thing. So this is a third degree. All right, last but not least, let's look at this one. So obviously there's some irregularities here. So if there's some irregularities, you can see there's a very big difference between this distance and this distance. Um, so because of that, I know that this has to be a second degree. Second degree type. Um, and um, then I'm gonna look at the P wave. So I'm looking to see what my PR, inter I should say, I'm not looking for P waves, I'm looking at my PR interval. So let's look at these. This is a normal, normal, normal. So these are all staying the same, but look, there's just a bunch of random drop beats. I've got a missing beat here. I've got a missing beat here. I've got a missing beat here, it looks like. Um, so I've just got a bunch of missing beats. So this is second degree type two. It's not getting longer, longer and dropping. It's just randomly dropping beats and I don't know when, um, I cannot predict them. So that's just a little practice to kind of get you started. I know these blocks can seem impossible, but the more you practice them, the better um, that you'll get used to them. So I do wanna add here at the end about blocks because I didn't really talk about treatment. Um, as a whole, like with most first degree blocks, we usually don't need to treat them because um, most of the time they're asymptomatic and we don't have to do too much with them. Um, when it comes to, you know, get, start getting into second and third degree blocks, you know, the best treatment for them is usually going to be um, a dopamine drip temporarily. And then most of the time these patients are gonna need a pacemaker or something else to help them to have, um, you know, that regular, um, you know, reliable beat. And so, um, you know, we really stay away from atropine that's not going to help at all um, in a patient that has a block. So dopamine and pacemaker is really the way to go for these patients. All right. Well, I hope that you enjoyed and maybe now blocks don't seem so scary. Eh? Maybe. Hope so. I'll talk to you later.